Ryan Blake's journey on the tennis court has taken him from a great high school athlete to collegiate player to world-ranked professional and even coach. Along the way, he's traveled the world, winning matches and making people laugh all the way to the Hall of Fame. Well, well deserved. Um, he will be one of the more interesting characters in the Hall of Fame. He will add to the Hall of Fame as much as it adds to him. You know, from a young kid, 10 years old, all the way up to now when he's 51 years old, coaching, you know, coaching college tennis, though, it's, it's been an honor to watch him grow out, you know, grow through the years. At 11 years old, Blake began his career at the Rivermont Country Club in Roswell, where his parents, Marty and Marsha, were recreational players. Blake's mother ran local tournaments and officiated at the U.S. Open and Davis Cup competitions. Well, we belonged um, to Rivermont because the neighborhood we moved in didn't have a pool. My kids were all young, so uh, we started playing tennis there. And he watched us and he started playing on the junior teams there. And that's how he got started and he went from there. Blake's first coach was Hall of Famer Larry Schnall, and his early instruction helped Ryan find success at the junior level. I think he got most of his talent from his mother, Marsha, because I used to coach Marsha as well back in the day, so I can see where Ryan got his talent from. Blake was a three-sport standout at the old Peachtree High School in Dunwoody. He excelled in football, basketball, and baseball, but when the coaches wanted to make him a lineman, he chose to focus on tennis. Well, he's actually just a tremendous athlete, and I don't think he, he actually became a good junior player till sort of the end of high school. Blake was a tall, powerful player with a strong serve and forehand. How heavy and how hard he can hit the ball is it's actually kind of amazing. By his senior year of high school, Ryan started to make a name for himself. He was the state singles runner-up in the GHSA Quad A tournament, the highest classification at the time. Despite his high school success, he was not highly recruited, but did get an offer from Georgia Southern, where he would end up playing both number one singles and number one doubles in Statesboro from 1986 to 1988. With his talent level, uh, if he had started a few years earlier, he probably um, easily could have played on the Georgia team um, instead of a, a lesser team like Georgia Southern. So he started a little bit late. Of course, he made up for it uh, later. After graduation, Blake did not plan to play professionally, but after working out and holding his own with touring pros Dan Cassidy and Barry Moore, they convinced him to give it a shot. I don't think Ryan understood his potential uh, and his ability uh, when he was just out of college that uh, not only would he beat these guys, he would beat them to a pulp sometimes. He was, he was an incredible athlete. Uh, and uh, it was a good decision for him to turn pro. I think that's, uh, uh, it set him up for, he's still involved in tennis. It set him up for his whole life. Ryan Blake played professionally from 1989 to 1995 and won tournaments across the globe. He played qualifying matches at Wimbledon in both the US and Australian Opens. And in 1994, he won three qualifying matches back to back to qualify for the main draw at the Australian Open. During this time, he beat many top 50 players, but his most notable win was over former world number one, Patrick Rafter. What got him through that time was being incredibly competitive uh, and having an incredibly strong uh, sense of uh, being able to accomplish anything he set his mind to. So grit and determination got him through that six years on the tour. Now, not every tournament that he played in had the facilities of a Wimbledon or Flushing Meadows, but that never stopped Blake. Once he even brought home a trophy from Southeast Asia. I had a chance to uh, uh, go to India a few years after he played, and the hotel I was staying at was right next to the National Tennis Center of, of, of India in Delhi. So as soon as I got home, I, I called Ryan up and I said, did you play there? He starts laughing. I, I said. I said, where did you stay? He said, well, we, we stayed in the dormitory, which I'd gotten a tour of. He said it was, it was 50 cents a night, unless you wanted a towel, and then it was 75 cents. After leaving the tour, Ryan Blake continued to play locally, winning the Atlanta City Open singles title. Later, he would capture the 30 and over Atlanta Senior Invitational. Then in 1997, he teamed with his old coach, Larry Schnall, to win the wild card qualifier at the AT&T Challenge in Atlanta. He would then do it again in 2000 with partner Chris Decker. 
we just had a fantastic time doing that, you know, and today I'm still grateful for him carrying me, you know, throughout all our matches throughout the year. So, but to be out there playing against number one seeds in front of the crowd, it was just um, nothing like it. Despite a stellar career on the court, Blake may be best remembered for his wardrobe choices, or rather, lack thereof. The big uh, intersection with all the states in the South, and it was played in Huntsville, Alabama, and Ryan did incredibly well. I think he was in the 45s, but the funny thing was, the only people he looked like were the maintenance guys at the, at the tennis center. He didn't look like any of the players. <laughs> but, so he's kind of always been known to not necessarily wear a tennis shirt. and Some of his rackets may have been in the closet for a couple of years, but you can't underestimate him. He can really play. You can't judge him by the way he dresses on the tennis court because sometimes he'll come to a match, he'll either have his Budweiser shirt on, his Roach Furniture shirt on, or a bowling shirt. He's always in, uh, he's always in um, basketball shorts and high top tennis shoes. So you, you really can't judge Ryan by the way he looks because uh, the next thing you know, uh, you're shaking hands and um, I've had one opponent come off and says, I think I just lost to a rodeo clown. And I said, no, that's Ryan Blake. Blake has been a head professional at the Sporting Club at Windy Hill and the Country Club of Roswell. He's currently the head pro at Town Lake Hills in Woodstock and is a volunteer assistant men's tennis coach at Kennesaw State University, where he has found tremendous success working with college players. If you don't have a connection with your student athletes, there is no way you can coach them. Um, he has been able to build that connection in a very short period of time. Um, our team trusts him on the court, off the court. Uh, he's a lot of fun to be around. Um, he's very intense, uh, of course very knowledgeable, uh, and that's a, a complete package that uh, very few people have it. Uh, and he has it, he has it all. Uh, I think if he wanted to be um, a full-time college coach, uh, he would be one of the best in the nation um, for sure. These days, Blake still picks up matches around the area and works as an NBA scout. He's a great natural athlete with an incredible will to win. And that probably got him through more matches than anything else, was that he just would never give up. Uh, there's a lot to be said for that. Congratulations to Ryan Blake, a 2018 inductee into the Georgia Tennis Hall of Fame.